Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray. Hello to all you folks in Memphis, Tennessee, of course, on ESPN uh, 790, 92.9 HD FM, and, of course, uh, in Brownsville on uh, 1520 AM and 95.3 FM. And News Talk 101.5 in Jackson, Tennessee. Shelby McCall is in the studio as our producer, uh, keeping me straight from six feet away. Uh, we didn't actually measure it, but it looks pretty close to that. So uh, <laughs> in the, we've had a great show already talking to the one and only Dale Sanders about uh, at the age of almost 85, uh, doing the rim to rim to the rim hike in the Grand Canyon. And now we're going to switch gears to a young man from over in Arkansas, in Searcy, Arkansas, who uh, has uh, become a name for himself in uh, the bass fishing and the kayak, and he's the recent winner of the 2020 Hook Bassmaster BSS Nation Kayak Series, uh, powered by Tourney X, presented by Abu Garcia. Boy, that's a title of a tournament right there. So <laughs> it is. It's the name himself yes, is Cody Milton. Good morning, Cody. Good morning. How are you guys doing? We're great to have you on the show. Uh, coming off the wind uh, on Lake Fork, and yes, and Ron, Thanks as you listen, me. yeah, and le- and listen to Ron. Ron's gonna, as I tell everybody, he is my interpreter. If you say something <laughs> that I don't understand, fishing wise, <laughs> and then Frank is my mentor, trying to calm me down. So uh, they are the they the combination that keeps me going. Let's let's talk a little bit, Cody, about your career because I know that. Uh, You've done a lot of fishing in our area, uh, up uh-huh. on Kentucky Lake, with your granddad, I think, and your dad. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and yeah. then you uh, you were in bass fishing for a long time, and uh, now you're into the kayak side, which is booming. And I- I'm assuming you work for Harding University, do you? I, I don't actually. I went to school there a couple. I went to school there a couple years ago. Yeah, still. Still use that email, though. That's probably why you That's kind of, yeah, well, I thought, well, he's still going to school. He must be, you know, want to graduate one of these times, you know. So, yeah, uh, yeah, not yet. Not but yet. You, We're but, getting there. But you do live in Searcy. So I let, do, yes, sir. So, so let's talk about 145 in the field. Ron, you've been to these kayak events. It's pretty amazing the way these guys can uh, get to fish. And, uh, and, and when I read this, and I know Ron's already read it, how you were able to get to fish at a regular bass boat can't get to. So uh, no, there, there's no way. It so, was it was. I mean, it was really per, like the perfect setup to be in a kayak that week. I mean, it was. I mean, I've said it so many times. I mean, it was like I was giddy the night before. You know, because I knew giddy. it was kind of out there. Okay. You know? Yeah. You know, I knew that like we had a huge advantage, even with those MLF guys being on the water that week. You know, it, they couldn't get to the fish we could. Yes. And especially on Saturday when it got super tough, and you've got you know ton of locals on the lake, plus fifty of the best anglers in the country of MLF. That lake got small quick. Um, and being able to push up in some, you know, past some little grass worms and finding, you know, eight to twelve inches of water where you couldn't drop even drop a troll in. Hold it, Cody. Um, Hold it, Cody. I, I got I got truck drivers saying, did he see eight to twelve inches of water? Yes, he didn't. To he didn't inches. say feet, did he, Ron? He said yep. inches. Nope. <laughs> so. um, actually, one of, one of my fishing practice was probably about a five and a half pounder. She left by tournament time, but uh, her back was her fin was out of the water when she was fanning. Amazing. Um, like you you would have thought it was a carp if you didn't really slow down and look. I mean, did, it was, how, what's it was your crazy. heart? What's your heart rate going when you're in that kayak and you see that? <laughs> So I'll tell you, when my 832, it was my big fish of the day, it was 2275. Okay. I spent about 30 to 45 minutes on her, and she never, I mean, I caught the buck, I guess, 15 minutes in, and she didn't come back for 15 minutes. And when she did come back, <laughs> she she turned on it immediately. I set the hook, missed her, and I just started oh. shaking, because I oh. knew she was about to eat it again. Yes. And I mean, it, it, I'm like, kid you not, the next cast, I flip in there and just gill plate open. I'm like, oh, goodness. <laughs> I just sat there. Well, talk about you know, it, Ron. Talk about it, Ron. You're waiting to. Yeah, I know. Cody, <laughs> you know, one of the things about fishing out of a kayak, and yeah. you're, you're fishing bed fish like that this time of the year, and it happens throughout the country, but mm-hmm. the presentation of your bait becomes so critical, and fishing out of a kayak, <laughs> because you are fishing so low, mm-hmm. you have a better presentation on your bait also. Very, very you? true. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to, to take that a step further, uh, one of my presentations that I had to have on one of the five pounders I caught was I had to catch it over a tree limb. Over um, a tree I limb? Couldn't get, yeah, I could <laughs> not get it to her unless I was over a limb. And, like, she eats it, and I'm just hanging a five pounder over a limb, you know, just watching it. <laughs> come on, come on. Uh, yeah, so it just, the day, you know, it's just like when it works out, it just works out. Like, I've been right there so many times over the last year and a half, and it's just, you know, you, you, I've, I've felt that same way before, but it's just like when it clicks, man, it just seems like it really clicks for you. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, explain the rules here, Ron, because. Uh, well, I want to, first of all, you know, I want, yeah, I, that's a great, great question, Larry. For all of our listeners out there, in kayak fishing, they do not go by pounds no. and ounces. Yeah. They go by inches. Inches. And yeah, there again, what they have to do also is, is to abide by whatever the lake rules are and everything else. Yeah. But they go by inches, and it's five fish limits in most kayak tournaments or whatever the lake limit is. Yeah. And it goes by total inches. Amazing. Now, guys, w what I want you to think about is Cody just won this tournament on Lake Fork out of a kayak. Yeah. And he had over a hundred pounds, I mean, a hundred inches. inches of bass. Now, <laughs> it's that's fine. five bass. <laughs> yeah. That averages 20 inches. It does, Ron. 20-inch bass I can figure is that at out. least five pounds. And he does, about it, that. And he does it all it's sight fishing. It's, sight, it's like tarpon, isn't it? I mean, you're like you're standing up sometimes and you're seeing these fish. <laughs> Uh, it, it was pretty surreal. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I told Ron uh, there is a connection here a little bit. Talk talk about uh, that Texas rig bait you used. I was I was using a Strike King uh, black and blue rage bug. All right, um, Ron knew that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, one of my favorite baits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really really good. You know, it's kind of one of those baits where when it's not moving, it's still moving, and those tend to be really good for bed fish. I feel like. Um, I, I was actually doing pretty well on pink in practice, but, and there was one fish that really liked pink. One and fish. she would come up and nose up to it every time, but she was like the only one in the tournament that liked pink. All the others were just like black and blue. You see this, um, folks? He's listening, he's listening, because he's, he's sight fishing. He's fishing out of a, a, a new canoe pursuit, and you need to talk yes, a little bit about that, because I know that's a, an advantage for it, but this is sight fishing. I mean, they're right there. there. I mean, you see them. And, <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, and so let's talk about that canoe that you're in because uh, yeah, the new canoe pursuit with my motor guide XI3. I mean, it's it's been unbelievable. <laughs> this was actually my second. It was actually I, I only signed with them about three three and a half weeks ago. So this is my second event with them. Um, ah, okay. It, it's un. I mean, it's like it's just as stable or more stable than any other kayak on the market. But what I really like about it is it makes it great for sight fishing and fishing really shallow is. You, you have a completely open platform with two recessed rod holders on each side and a front hatch for added storage. Uh. And, you know, you've still got your back, you know, tackle storage, you know, on the back as well. But it's just super open, and it's a very friendly platform. You know, I feel like a lot of kayaks might take time to kind of learn the ins and outs of them. But the new canoe, and, I, like, I've been in them before, but it's a really good boat that somebody can jump in and make a switch immediately. Well, again, we're talking right. to Cody Milton. Uh, he is of uh, Cersei, Arkansas. Uh, actually a businessman over there, right downtown, uh, Cersei, yes, which all of us go through on our way to Little Red River or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. It's called Beyond the Boundaries Outfitters. And that's uh, correct. That, that's your real life. I, I know is, that. Yeah. But actually, I guide on the Little Red River, too, out of Beyond Boundaries. That's what I was you, you're thinking here. This gets kind of scary yeah, when you start thinking like an old man, like me. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you know, when I think about this. But, uh, yeah, he will take you. Uh, and and also, uh, I like your your motto: never ever give up. That sounds no, like what our country needs right now. Absolutely. Thank you. you yeah, and that, I'll tell you a big one, and I haven't really said it in a little while now, but um, man, I like I'm a big believer in falling in love with the process, like falling in love with the day. Yes. You know, I mean, especially in tournament fishing, the conditions are so different. Like all you can really do for yourself is, you know, put you in a place where you you know have fish around, and from there, like. Each day is different, and, like, you really have to fall in love with learning that day, you know. And that's, I don't know, that's kind of been a big thing for me. Like, I never get too carried away on the water, at least try not to. 
Well, I, I don't I don't know. You're 26 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we just talked yeah. to a man who's 84, getting ready to hike the uh, rim to the rim to the rim in the Grand Canyon. That's and, awesome. Uh, what radio show can go from 84 to 26 in, in two minutes? <laughs> you know, when, when, when you get down to that. And uh, I, I, I'm looking at this, and I've looked at your product and the canoe. It's a, Frank, I want to tell you, this canoe he's using looks like a slingshot without wheels. Okay, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, it's sleek. It's cool looking, Frank. It is. And uh, and uh, wireless foot control on the front. It's yeah. A little bass boat with a power pole on the back. Yeah. What what <laughs> happened to my what happened to my old canoe with a cane pole? You know, what I mean. Yeah. Well, you know that power pole that yes. you have, Cody. Yeah, that that's power. critically important, isn't it? It absolutely is, and I'll tell you, this is the first tournament that. I actually felt like I was too shallow to use it. Um, too I shallow. actually took the power pole out and just used a push pole and staked out through my scupper hole. That's a push pole. Um, That's I mean, it's quiet. You know, they really are quiet, but it's just that they were so shallow. Like anything was so spooky. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I like I I took that power pole off on Thursday, I guess, um, and just started. I mean, really, just push you know push pulled around, and then would just stick the pole through my scupper hole, and it was kind of my own manual power pole. <laughs> well, folks, you need to for information, Cody. Where do they go to find out more about you and maybe about uh, your business and everything like? Maybe book a trip with you. This is the time to do it. Tell them uh, how to it, get in touch with you. Is. Tell them how to get in um, touch with you. Uh, the best way to keep up with me is at Kodiak Fishing, uh, Kodiak Fishing on uh, Instagram and uh, CodyMiltonFishing.com. Um, but if you're interested in the Little Red River, which our water levels have been perfect over the last couple of weeks, um, I, I mainly work through Beyond Boundaries Outfitters. I do a lot of work with Tailwater Fishing Company as well. Okay. But um, it's definitely, uh, yeah, it's, and we're based out of Thursday. I live more on the river myself. But, um, <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet set up. You know, you've got, where I'm at in the world, you know, you've got two of the best trout streams in the country an hour and a half away. There's yep. some of the best duck hunting in the world 30 minutes away. It's you're a cool in, little place around there. Really you're in God, Cody, you're in God's country, okay? A man, am, a, right? man, a man from Arkansas can say that. Hey, thank you, young man. Uh, congratulations you. again. And, uh, we got your number. Let's talk a little bit later on, uh, uh, maybe in the spring or summer, and we'll get Ron back on to interpret what you said for me. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, all That's right, man. Have a great day. We'll talk to you I later. It. All right. You too. Thank okay. You. Let's take Have a break. Uh, go from uh, Cody Milton to uh, Abo Outdoors in Chester, South Carolina. Yes, Ron yep. knows him. I, I've just yep. discovered this company, and uh, we're going to work some uh, things with him with Scott Clavern. So let's take a break. Frank, you still awake? I'm still here. I uh, love Frank. Uh, we, we've got to work it out so Frank can do one of the introductions, even if he's not here. And that's part of that uh, tradition here at Outdoors. Right? Let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> 